I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 13th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be doing some street food with Cami, and I'm going to be talking about going live on television right here in Nicaragua, which is something I've never done before. It was quite an adventure because I had to do it in Spanish. We're going to get to that right after the bump. <laughs> Before we get into too much on today's video, I'm going to explain a little bit what's going on with the timing of the last few videos. The video for yesterday, for the 12th, was actually recorded a week in the future, so yesterday in real time compared to this, and today I'm going to mix a few days together because there's just a lot going on. For those who've been watching my shorts or who watched live television yesterday, if you're watching this on the day it releases, that was literally the day that I'm recording this. I'm still in the shirt from doing that. So that happened on the 19th, but we're putting this on the video for the 13th, which comes out on the 20th because all that just happened in real time and we're going to get it out on the show. So given that, I know that was really hard to follow uh, today that uh, we had the live showing was on the 19th. The day that we recorded the trip to Managua to do the uh, shopping was actually on the 18th. It posted on the 19th, but we made it the show about the 12th just because sometimes we have to fill them in like that. We're taking a little bit of liberties with the actual schedule of the days in some cases to make it easier to do the show. We used to be really good about telling what happened on a day exactly as it happened, and I still try to do that in general, but uh, given that we have really gotten really serious about getting this out every single day and that uh, we need to get out a lot of material that isn't necessarily about my schedule for the day. Uh, we've had to make it a little bit looser as to which day things happen. And when it gets really dramatic, I like to somehow fill you guys in so that there is some ability to follow along with real life in some way. So some of the events we're talking about actually happened on the day I'm recording this, which is several hours only before you will get it on the 20th at 7 a.m. when it goes live. So if you're watching this, as I recommend, at 7 o'clock Central, uh, Central America time with your morning coffee, and you're like, ah, these dates are really confusing. Yes, the live stuff literally happened yesterday, which for me is today. So we found out only on the 18th, on the morning, we were heading to Managua to do the Price Mart shopping, found out that Channel 6, Canal 6, had asked for me to come on and do their morning show, which is Nicaragua Linda, which means beautiful Nicaragua. And uh, it's a morning show where they, they do topical stuff about tourism and events uh, and things like that in Nicaragua. So a lot of um, musical things, dance things, cultural, uh, showing new constructions, new activities, those kinds of things. And so a show like this one is of great interest to a show like that because we really have a lot of alignment. They are beautiful Nicaragua and for all intents and purposes, so are we. So uh, we got invited to come out and speak today, which is amazing like how cool is that but we got one day warning literally like 25 hours warning was it we were already in motion to head to Managua for the day I didn't want to cancel that because it would just be mayhem if we if we canceled that and push it off all the rest of the schedule for the week would just fall apart so we decided to go ahead and do it anyway so yesterday was a busy day running around Managua and this morning I had to get up at 4 30 in the morning and zip to Ciudad Sandino pick up Marcella, who was organizing the whole thing. She handles all of that complex stuff here in the country for the show, and you guys see her on the show all the time. And then we had to drive all over the city, taking care of getting ready for the show, and then get to the studios by eight o'clock in the morning for an 8.30 live show. Now this is really cool, and it was all super interesting, but it's also kind of stressful because this was a lot going on. Like. I mean, seriously, this is a lot, no warning, doing a live show. And of course, I don't watch television just in general. Like I don't have one hooked up. So like I'm not 100% clear on the format. I like I have a general idea, like I'm, I'm aware of a lot of these things and it's a morning show, right? So it's not wildly different than a morning show in the US. They literally have cooking segments and people sitting on the couches and talking about the weather and all that kind of stuff. So it's one of those, you know, the feel good morning shows like you're used to and, and every place has them. Um, so it's a general format that I was expecting 
but there's always some surprises. I don't know which set we we're going to be sitting on and different things. Uh, and it was, but it was really interesting going to the television studio and getting to go through and see what the studio's like, what equipment they're using, how their sets are set up, all the different ones. They've got the sports, the news, the, the like morning show, very morning show with cooking area and the, the interview area and a few others. Like it was, it was all really neat and air conditioned really heavily. Even the outdoor, the green room is actually outdoors. And it's like 20 degrees under outside temperature. They have so much cold air coming out of the actual enclosed studio that the outdoor green room is cold. It was, that was wild. That's the first time I've ever had that much. Like Disney World does that where they pump in so much uh, cold air that the outdoor spaces start to cool down. But this was the first time I've ever had something like that in Nicaragua. Now it was a small outdoor space. It was a green room with a very minimal opening to the sky. So it wasn't sucking all the air out, but it was pretty surprising how cold they were able to make it uh, and that they had the green room outside. But we did that, we waited, uh, and then we went in. It was really cool, we took some selfies, which I'll put up in the, in the post. I wasn't able to get it out before the show, um, but I'll, I'll put some of those into our community here so you can see them, and on my Instagram, of course. Uh, just selfies in the different sets and stuff like that's pretty cool because uh, we were able to just wander around the sets. We were just going around taking selfies and all the camera guys were like, ha ha, have fun. Um, and, uh, and then we did an actual interview. Now this was pretty crazy for a couple of reasons. One, this was an interview live on TV in Spanish. And for those of you who know me, and for those who don't, I don't speak a whole lot of Spanish. Um, so this was my first really big test of can I sit down and do something like television in another language. Uh, and it seemed to go pretty well. I got good feedback on it. Um, I'm sure everyone is like, you know, trying to make me feel good about doing a show in a second language. But um, as, as an American, learning a second language is very challenging because, uh, you know, we don't get introduced to that stuff until we're so old and it's so out of the, the cultural norm and there's so few resources for it. It really does make for um, a very difficult time, I think. And a lot of it is just starting really late. Right. If you're gonna if you're gonna learn a second language, you really want to start by the time you're like five, um, and I and if not, you know, by the time you're like ten, makes a big difference. Uh, and I had wanted to when I was a kid. I always wanted to learn a second language, but we didn't have resources for that. Those things weren't provided by the education system when I was a kid, um, and there was no access to a foreign language resource of any sort for me until I was fourteen. Um, at which point I took Spanish all the way through high school. Like I took every optional language thing I was allowed to take the whole way. Um, and it was not very much, but I'm sure my Spanish teacher, Mrs. Guidez would be really thrilled to find out that I did live Spanish television now. That was, that was just really cool. Um, I enjoyed it. I, you guys know, I like being on camera and doing stuff and doing stuff live doesn't really bother me. Um, and doing it in Spanish was, was really interesting. It added a lot of challenge. Um, I wish I would have done some in English first and then gotten to do it in Spanish. It'd be nice to like step up to it, but I think it went as well as could be expected <laughs> given my Spanish. Um, and it was fun to do. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting to do more. And they definitely gave us an indication that they felt this was going to lead to more uh, time on television. So that was, it was a lot of fun and a lot of people watch it. The, so that was the first cool thing that I did this thing in Spanish. The second part is that um, w they have uh, two ways to watch it. One is on the regular, it's broadcast TV. So it's all cable and broadcast here in the country. Uh, so everybody with Claro and Tigo, any of the TV services, they have that channel. Uh, so, and, and lots of people were tuned in. Like we were getting messages from people who didn't know I was on the show. And they're like, wait, is that Scott on the show? Um, so people were really watching it, but also they have it live on YouTube. So you could stream it. And uh, my team at work, had a lot of people watching it. Like I know of many people who are sending me screenshots from it. And as many people as they were sending me screenshots was about the same number of people they had as live viewers, which means we effectively generated the entire online viewership of Nicaragua Linda for the day, which is really interesting and pretty cool that uh, our little community here uh, is able to make such an impact in that way. So that was that was really neat as well. So that was a fun morning. It was a stressful morning. It's an exhausting morning because I had to be up so early. I did get pretty good sleep last night. I went to bed kind of early, got a solid five hours, but I still had to wake up with an alarm, which is never pleasant. And then it was a, it was a pretty rushed morning, but at no point were we late. I was a few minutes early getting to see Odad Sandino, a few minutes early getting to the studio, managed to keep a few minutes early the whole day. Uh, I built in enough time for everything and uh, didn't hit any, any real snags. So the whole thing went smoothly um, and I'm really happy with it. And so that was a really exciting morning. 
Now, what we had intended to show today, uh, Kemi and I had gone out and did some work with trying to, we wanted to go film uh, in Central Park because it's really interesting and we were gonna do some uh, street food in Central Park and we got there and discovered a band playing and a big event going on. So we grabbed a little bit of footage of that and if you're interested in more of this, I'm just gonna show a little clip. If you're interested in more of this, uh, go check out um, our other channel, Nicaragua 360, and we actually recorded several minutes of this with the 360 cam, so you can really see the square and everything. I'll try to link it in uh, the description and stuff and at the end of the episode, so if you if you want to go find it, it should be pretty easy, but just go to Nicaragua 360 and look for uh, Leon Parque Central. It'll come right up. But uh, So we weren't able to do any of the recording that we wanted to do there, uh, and instead we had to walk around and we found some street food by the Central Market. We didn't go into the Central Market, but we went to the Central Market. There was some amazing street food and we ate there and, and it, was, it was fun, tried some cool things. Uh, she's never had a lot of that street food before. We did a frittanga. However, the GoPro once again failed on audio. So we lost this one segment of audio. So we're gonna have to, to voice over that. So I'm not gonna explain that while we're doing it. You'll notice that it's not a, a, a synced audio recording uh, during that segment. So that's what happened. And then we were able to go on and get some elote. So we're doing street food as our second thing today. And that's what we had meant to do as a topic. But this whole interview thing came up and it was live. So I wanted to fill you guys in and get you up to speed as to what that was. Um, and I'm super excited about it. And I just, I'm recording this. I just walked in the door uh, from getting back from that uh, and just grabbing Burger King on the way home because I miss getting Burger King veggie whoppers. This is one of the few chances that I get to do it. And we forgot to do it yesterday. I ran out of time or whatever. So uh, yeah, let's get on to that street food and we'll see you after that. All right, we were coming down to the plaza to do some regular filming of just normal stuff. And we stumbled on a marching band and something going on. So we have no idea what we're stumbling into, but we got something interesting. So we're just popping in, turn on the camera. And we're gonna see what we find. There's like a marching band walking around. They were playing seconds ago, uh, but we didn't quite get to them yet. So I don't know if they're leaving or what. Have you done these? I don't know what So it's like a sweet cheese pancake. Yeah, okay. So it's like Nicaraguan crepes. Okay. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, una, por favor. Comer aquí o para llevar? Uh, para llevar? Yeah, para aquí. Okay. You can sit. Oh, right. Yeah. Pancake? Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, what else should we try? Okay. So these are enchiladas, I believe, and then these are like, I don't know what they call them, it's like a fried taco. Popping queso? Sí. Ah, dos por favor. Y un queso frito. Oh, sí, okay. What else do you want to try? Yeah. Maybe this? Yeah. Um, Chicken lettuce thing. Yeah? Yeah. 
Good. Good. Which is gracias. So I'm here with my street food. I took something that I don't remember the name, but it's basically just like a lettuce cake that's oily and greasy with um, rice and chicken and vegetable in it. And the other one, it's a manuelita, if I remember well. That's correct. Yeah, manuelita. Yeah, good. Well, it's a it's basically a greasy pancake, like a very very oily pancake that's also sweet with um with cheese in it. So, um I got these at the <laughs> at the market uh just on the side of the road. Was it the market? No, it wasn't. It is. It's the Central Market. Yeah, at the Central Market. And so, um yeah, here's my first bite into the greasy pancake. It was just very oily and that's why I look a bit unsure. But after the first two bites, I kind of liked it. I don't think I would have it again, but it wasn't all bad. And um, so yeah, it was a nice time. It was sunset and we were just really chill on the side of the road like that, eating our greasy street food. All right, for vegetarians, I tend to get torta de papa. This is, so it's fried. It's like potatoes with cheese in the middle. We just went to a frittanga in case that wasn't clear. We're doing street food right by the market. Uh, it was really busy on the square. So we came down here to get some food and this is standard frittanga fare. It's really good. So if you're vegetarian like me, torta de papa is perfect because it's got cheese and potato and uh, yeah. All right, and these are good too. These are a little bit more desserty than they are a meal, but they're pretty heavy. So like, it's a meal, but if you're looking for something just a little bit sweeter, it's a little bit interesting. Luciana likes these, my daughter. Hmm, that is a good one. Actually, that was a really good one. It's not bad. Hmm, I really like that one. It's got a, it's really got a flavor like fried dough at the fair, except that's not at all what it is. It's a pancake. <laughs> and then I also have, I have to pick this up. There's no way to, to do this with a fork. So this is just queso frito. It's just fried cheese, which is really, really good. I haven't tried this one, but in general, fried cheese here is perfect. It's really popular with breakfast, but also popular with street food at the Fritangas. They have it almost everywhere all day long. All right, that's good. So I'm about to try the second thing I have, which is like, like a lettuce cake with some rice and chicken and vegetables. So, let's try it. Mm. I like it, but that's Juicy with oil as well.
There goes my workout. Yeah. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Ah, nuevo uh, nuestro canal. Oh, gracias. <laughs> gracias por la comida. Buen día. Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Maybe this way. Oh, well, that way. That way works. Hope you enjoyed watching our street food sampling there. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, remember you can like and subscribe. That helps a lot. If you want to do more, go watch some more episodes and like those as well. Share them with your friends, put them on Facebook, post them on Twitter, LinkedIn even, Reddit articles are great. Anything like that that gets the word out, boy does that help. It's, it's hard to express just how useful that is to the show to have you guys spreading the word in that way. I do that, I put it on Twitter, I put it on Facebook, no, not on Facebook, on, on LinkedIn and on Reddit, I don't have Facebook. I really depend on you guys to get it out on Facebook and I know some of you do, so thank you very much. But different groups, different people, all the different places gets more and more audience for that. And uh, if you'd like to support the, the show in an even more concrete way, I'm gonna put a right up here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, that helps support the channel directly and helps us afford all the things that we do both here and on Nicaragua 360. And uh, if you're looking for information on relocation services, whether it's just a discussion or house finding services, or you need tours to help you decide what country, what city, what type of living you're interested in, what kind of situations are available, what prices would be like, and you just want to tour around and have someone go with you, we do all that. Just send us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. That is our new service that's really started because of all the interest in this channel. Uh, we had no intention of starting that kind of service here and it's become kind of our specialty so we offer that as well as always get down in those comments let me know how things are going just say hi if nothing else if you've got questions though be sure to ask some comments whatever things you want us to do Kemi is here for about a month we're gonna be doing as much as we can to travel around do cool things different activities so we want to know what you want us to do while she's here definitely let us know but just say hi if nothing else it's great to have all the conversation down there we have such an awesome community and I will see all of you tomorrow.